present silent treatment, if the narcissist was honest. As you know, silent treatments are used by all narcissists, and especially by the mid-range group. There are two forms of silent treatment present, where we sit with you and ignore you, or stand glaring at you, cold-shouldering you, giving you an icy look. Or, in the same house as we continue to ignore you as you try and talk to us. And absent silent treatments. Sometimes the narcissist flounces and storms out. Sometimes they slink away, disappearing and not responding to you. In other instances, you're not with the narcissist and you try and get in touch and you receive no response. Silent treatments are repeatedly and regularly used because of their convenience, effect and low energy consumption. However, what is actually going on in the mind of the narcissist when a present silent treatment is being doled out towards you? If the greater or the ultra deigned to share their thoughts with you, the following is what you would be hearing. Of course, lesser and mid-range narcissists don't know what they are, and therefore similar thoughts would be going on in the unconscious. They wouldn't be actively thinking this way. However, if that unconscious were shared, this is also what you would hear. The lesser would be somewhat less articulate than what you would hear, but the message remains the same. Adjust accordingly to lower cognitive function of lower lesser and middle lesser. But in essence, what I'm going to describe for you is if the narcissist was honest about what was really going on in their mind, be it conscious or unconscious, when you're receiving a present silent treatment, this is what would be happening. I think I have said enough. I wish you would think the same. You have never shut up asking me about my day at work as I try to watch the sport on television. On and on you have gone, asking question after question. It makes me wonder why you are so bloody interested. Fishing for something, are you? Trying to catch me out? You won't do that. I'm cleverer than you. Much cleverer. What I do at work is nothing to do with you, and you won't find out about my plans until such time as I decide that you should know. And it isn't time, so I wish you would just be quiet and let me watch this game. You keep on going, talking over my television viewing, which tells me that you regard my viewing experience as unimportant, and that tells me that you obviously think that I'm not important, and you really ought to know by now that I am important. I hate you doing this. I can feel the burning from your selfish and treacherous action, and it's paining me, but I know what to do. I know how to stop this pain, and believe me, I'm going to do it, and do it now. You never know when to shut up, do you? I suppose you think you're being pleasant, asking me how my day has been. But you don't care. You just do it for the sake of appearances, to make you look good. The caring and interested partner. I know your game. I have you worked out. You're a fraud. Yap, yap, yap. Like some irritating puppy around my ankles. On and on you go. Just shut up, will you? I cannot concentrate with your wasp-like buzzing around me. How is the new recruit getting on? How is the project developing? Where did you go for that business lunch? Was it good? What did you have to eat? Who was it with? Just shut up. No. You are still chattering away. I don't think you're even waiting for an answer, are you? Just asking questions to seem like you're involved in me in the conversation when all you are doing is engaging in another of your pointless and egotistical monologues. Do you know how boring you sound? If I wasn't trying to concentrate on this match, I think I would slip into a coma listening to you drone on with your worthless opinions and your anodyne observations. Just shut up. No? Very well, I will. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm not even going to nod, shake my head, or make an affirmative grunt. Nothing. Total silence. My goodness me, you've stopped. Perhaps you've remembered that you needed to breathe. Ah, excellent. You've noticed that I no longer appear to be listening. Believe me, I am listening. 
and I'm doing so with considerable attentiveness, because I need to listen what, to what is coming my way. Let me guess. I think you will lead with, are you listening to me? Any second now. And yes, there it is, as I predicted. I'm not going to answer. Go on, repeat the question. And true to form, you do. Now, I have your attention, haven't I? I can see you from the corner of my eye as I stare at the screen, pretending that the figures running around with a ball are more interesting than you. They are not, because what you are starting to do is actually what I am interested in. You're giving me control. I can see you leaning forward, trying to catch my eye. I know you're there, but I'm not going to acknowledge you. Sometimes you throw something towards me to get my attention, usually a cushion. It's not a nasty action, not like when I throw things at you. That reminds me, I must replace that coffee mug which I hurled at you. You were light on your toes that day as it sailed past and smashed against the wall. Anyway, that was last week and this is now, and I can hear you asking the question a third time. Will it be the cushion? No, you've chosen to stand up instead. Gosh, you must be looking to assert some authority from the get-go. I am talking to you. I know that you are, but I'm not answering you, but already I can hear the mounting irritation in your voice, and already I can feel the flames rising inside of me as they burn away the cold, harsh iciness of your threat to my control. That pain is already receding. Will you answer me, please? No, I will not. I have to turn my head so you don't see my smirk at your attempt to be commanding. It amuses me. I can see your hands move to your hips, and I half expect you to stamp the ground with your foot. What's the matter? Why won't you answer me? The voice rises higher, signalling your anxiety and frustration, and the flames continue to build inside of me. I maintain the stony-faced expression, ink black eyes, staring at the screen. I can see the movement on the television, but it is as if I'm watching it from very far away, as all that I am concentrating on now is your voice and the continuing delicious flaming sensation, sensation that is sweeping across me. Why aren't you answering me? The questions have altered now, haven't they? A switch from your nosiness about my work to you now asking why I have fallen silent. You can keep asking, and I know you will. You will go on for some time. You will storm out of the room, trying to force a response from me, but your slammed door just keeps the flames burning. You will come back in. You always do. You will return contrite and apologising, although you won't know what you're trying to apologise for. Still, that won't stop you going through a carousel of reasons in the hope of breaking my silence. Did I upset you? Did I say something wrong? Did I not listen to you? Did I say something offensive? Please, what did I do wrong? Please, will you just talk to me? I hate this. I hate falling out. What have I done? Every time you ask these questions, the pain and concern in your voice keeps adding to the sense of power that I am feeling. The wound that you created has long since closed, and I now am savouring the growing power that courses through me as I continue to assert control over you and receive your fuel. You have no idea what you are doing as you try, as you always do, to make things right. I will stay seated here, not even looking at you. You won't try and stand in front of me whilst I am watching the television. You will not dare do that, or dare to switch it off. You remember what happened last time when you did that, don't you? And I know you won't be in a hurry to experience that again. I can sit and revel in my power over you, and you just keep adding to it with your pitiful and plaintive questions. You will try to find out what is wrong. You will blame yourself next and start to apologise as you scramble to guess what it is that you have done wrong in the hope that you stumble on the right subject matter and make things right. But you will fail. Then you move on to trying to bribe me into speaking to you, suggesting we go out, or that my friends come around for drinks tomorrow night, 
or that you will cook me something special. Keep at it. I won't respond. I will not even look at you. You are completely invisible to me as far as you're concerned. I wonder how long I will maintain this silence with you. I'm in control, but your questions continue to threaten it, so I will have to keep maintaining it. You haven't worked out what to do yet, I'm pleased to say. You keep on asking, pestering and questioning, driven by your own anxiety, that causes you to want to ascertain what has happened and make things right. This means you might break off for half an hour, but then you resume trying a different tack. If all you knew you had to do was do exactly what I'm doing, and it will stop. Go silent and get on with what you want and do it, and I will then start speaking to you to draw fuel from you and to assert control, and I will start acknowledging you once again as I consider a different manipulation to use against you to gather my precious fuel and assert the necessary control. Fortunately, your empathic nature means you want to understand, you want the truth, you want to fix and heal, and this will make you hang in there, and all the while you provide me with fuel and power me. So long as you do so, so long the silence will continue. <laughs>